page 203, just a quick uh, glance through it again. I would strongly encourage you to have these prefixes associated with the number of sides. And we call the number of sides, we call them N. Okay, so on page 203, this is. After these, we just call them N-sided polygon, right? So 13-sided, 14-sided, 50-sided, it doesn't matter. Okay. And then we, uh, I talked about <clears throat> regular versus irregular polygons. And that for you to be in the regular category, you have to have two check boxes need to be checked off. All sides being congruent and all angles being congruent. So we did talk about triangles, we did talk about quadrilaterals, and an equilateral triangle as well as a square would be considered a regular polygon. Irregular, you have a rectangle when it comes to quads. You have an isosceles triangle when it comes to triangles. It would con be considered irregular because it needs to have all four sides, in this case, and all three sides the same, as well as all four angles, all three angles here. Uh, so that is the difference between regular and irregular polygons. Then uh, on the back side, you have this handout, and I gave you a bunch of formulas. You need to have these formulas written down. So Thursday's lesson will have this, right? Uh, so if you missed it, see Polly's one video, right? If you uh, if you missed it, that's on Thursday. It's called Polygons One. We started talking about the formulas. So can you please uh, write them down as quick as possible before I start uh, using them? And always remember that N represents the number of sides of the given polygon that we're considering. Okay. So the sum of all interior angles, it's denoted by the letter S. It's the number of sides minus 2 times 180 degrees. The interior angle, so each interior angle is very similar to the first formula, except for you divide it by the number of sides. Then you have your central angle and exterior angle. They are the same. Watch. The formula is exactly the same. And we'll explain that in a bit. And the last one, which is the scariest one, scary looking one, the number of diagonals is n times n minus 3, so the number of sides times the number of sides minus 3 divided by 2, and you can only get a whole number there. If you get a decimal, you made a mistake. You got to go back. Okay. And what are diagonals? Right? Polygons can have a number of diagonals, and I drew them out here. We, we figured out that a pentagon, if you drew all the diagonals inside of it, which I will never make you do, I will never make you draw them, I will always make you calculate them, but you can draw them if you want. I would not suggest that because if I give you like a 20-sided polygon, you need a lot of different highlighters to draw them, to not mix them up and double count, right? So I would not suggest that. We're going to label a little bit. Um, so what I, I did not mention last time we met is that, let me zoom out a little bit here. These three here, so the ice, think of ice, right? Interior, central, and exterior. These three only work with regular, write that down, regular polygons. It, they will not work, those formulas do not work if it's an irregular polygon. So 
So that means that the other two that are, remain do work with irregulars, right? But the ice, interior, central, exterior only work for those. And so I give you a bunch of, this would be, uh, this would have n is equal to five, right? Pentagon, penta, right? n is equal to three, this is a triangle. This one has check mark on when you start counting. So one, two, three, four, five, six. n is equal to six, that's a hexa. Again, we have penta here, I'm not gonna redo that one. This is also a penta, this is a tri. So we're gonna just leave that for now and go right into calculations. Formulas should be on your study sheet, but they're also on your formula sheet. I don't have one on me right now, but the yellow has all these formulas as well. Maybe slightly different the way they wrote it out, but it's there. Okay, let's do some math so you wake up. Practice. Calculate the interior, that's I, the exterior, that's E, and the central angles, that's C, for the following. Label them using I, C, and E. Okay, we're going to do that right now. The first thing you do, folks, is trust me, I have a software. I can do, I can go 30-sided polygon. I can go crazy on this. Okay, so you just go check mark where you're going to start counting, and then you go one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to start nice and easy. Okay, so don't think that it's always going to be five. Okay, I tell myself that this is a pentagon. That's the name of this particular polygon. Okay, I'm going to calculate the interior angle. Interior angle is n minus 2 times 180 degrees divided by n. Start with my formula just now. And n is 5 minus 2 times 180 divided by 5. Notice that I'm substituting in. My n is now 5. Okay. And it, it's mental math here, right? So this is 3 times 180 divided by 5. You could get a decimal here. So it's only the diagonals where you want to be careful. So 3 times 180 equals, divided by 5, it's 180 degrees. So the interior angle is 108 degrees. Done. Next up, I'm going to do the exterior because I have a I have a, a goal here. I'm going to I'm going to find the exterior. Exterior is 360 divided by n. So you just take 360 divided by five. Exterior angle is equal to 360 divided by five you get 72. Let's see if you notice anything in a bit. I, I won't do it just now. I want you to notice it yourself. Central angle is also 360 divided by n. 360 divided by 5. So central is 72 degrees. Uh, the interior, the exterior, and the central. But I need you to know where they are on the diagram. It might be worth a full mark just to know where they are. Okay? And so if you get one mark for each, that's three marks. You don't want to lose three marks. They're actually fairly simple if you were here. So let's do the interior first. Any, so there are five corners here. Five sides, five corners. At any corner, you can just go and make one of these. That is called, this is one interior angle right there. 
I'm just labeling one. Okay. Now, because I chose to label this interior angle, I'm going to do this. Get the base here, go along the base, travel along it. And when you get to the corner, you extend it a little bit. Dashed, a dashed line. Just go out like that. And I'm going to use a different color here. I'm going to use red. And finish that semicircle. This is called the exterior angle. Can anybody tell me what do you think those two are going to add up to? Joey? 180. Connor, were you going to say that? Why were you going to say that? Oh, I did talk about it already. Maybe I might have talked about it already, so I forget after a long weekend. But th there's a straight line, right? You see that? So I and E are 180. Watch this. Would this add up? I is here, E is there. Do these add up to 180? Yes, they do, right? So they add up to 180. They're called supplementary. Do the same here. Right? They add up to 180 supplementary. So just so it sticks out when you come back. What does that mean, folks? If I give you the exterior angle, you can easily find the interior because you can just subtract it from 180 or vice versa. If I give you interior, you can just... So exterior angle, I'm going to give you a cheat here. I hope you wrote that down. I'm just going to go back up to the formulas and say or exterior is going to be 180 minus the interior angle. That's a just that's just an aside. I would make sure I have that highlighted. And then we're going to go to the interior angle here or the interior angle is 180 minus the exterior angle right so if you happen to know the exterior angle just subtract that from 180 and then you get this guy or if you have the interior angle subtract that from 180 and get the exterior they are supplementary they add up to 180 okay we're not done labeling yet by the way let's do this there are five exterior angles folks five interior so let's do that let's ex let's travel along this one extend it at this corner that is e right there and then you travel along the top and extend the side here that's e this is what I see a lot. This is a common mistake. Don't copy what I'm just about to do here. Some students just do this. To tell me that's the exterior angle. That's wrong. Because you have to be able to travel along the side and then extend it, okay? So don't make that mistake of just, I'm just going to go a dashed line here somewhere and tell me that that's the exterior. That's wrong, okay? So then you travel. There's only one exterior per corner, okay? Regardless of how you travel, there's only one per corner. And what about the central? Think of center. So pick a cent, pick the middle, make a dot there. And now it's slicing pizza. Some of you had that last night. I had a pizza last night. It was delicious. Domino's, by the way. I go from the center to this corner, and then I go from the center to the next one. So you can go this way, or you can go that way. It doesn't matter. I'm going to go like this. And this, the angle resulting from those two sides you just created is what we call the central angle. Okay, Why is, where does the 360 come from? 
360 is a full circle, right? 360 is a full circle. At this point, if you were to go all the way around, it would be 360, right? So we split the 360 amongst the five sides it has. So you're basically splitting 360 degrees into one fifth, right? So this is your central angle right here. There are five, but I'm not going to label them all. Okay, you just need to label one, and that's fine. Okay, let's keep going. Are you having fun? I hope you have fun. Uh, it gets trickier. So let's uh, jump. I just want you to do one extra question on your own here. Can you do ice for this one? So I want you to calculate the interior, the exterior, and the central for this shape and label all three of them. Just one. Just label one exterior, one interior, and one central. See if you can do that. You need to figure out how many sides it has. So flip to the back page, put a check mark on one side, and start counting from that check mark. Don't double count, okay? So see if you can do that. Something like this is definitely going to be on a test. Definitely. I'm not going to tell you how many sides the shape will have, but try this right now. So figure out interior, exterior, and central angle for this shape starting now. Uh, I, know t I know space is terrible, so I'm going to... I'm gonna have to add, but I'm gonna steal a little bit of room from this this one maybe, or not. So this has nine sides. That is a nonagon, right? Nonagon. If you want to write that down. Um, and so for the interior angle, it's calling for n minus two, so nine minus two times 180 divided by nine. And so that is seven. Do this in your head, guys. Seven. Otherwise, you might have bed mass issues. So that's 1260 divided by nine. That's 140. So this is your interior angle right there. Uh, exterior, you can do the cheat now if you want. You can go, I know that exterior is 180 minus the interior, which is 40 which you got anyways using the formula, right? 360 divided by nine is 40. So regardless, that's what you get. Central is 360 divided by nine, which is also 40. And on a regular polygon, they will always be the same. Okay, central and So now you need to label. This is where you get the marks. So pick any corner. Like, let's say you want this one here. Put an I there. Okay, that's your I. Any one of those corners, you can do them all if you want, but just one is necessary. Exterior, you I, I like to have them side by side. You don't have to. But let's say you're at this corner. Which one, Mr. Dirksen, was it this one or was it this one? It doesn't matter, but you can only have one. So if you want to travel this way, then that's your exterior angle there. If you... If you traveled this way, then your dashed line would have gone here, like that, and that's still fine, but you can only have one per corner, okay? And you would have nine interior, nine exterior, all of that. Central, find the middle, go to one corner, and then you gotta go to the one right next to it. So this one or that one, you cannot go anywhere else. So that's your C there. The more sides it has, the smaller the central angle will become, right? Because you're splitting the 360 among more sides, right? So if you have a 120-sided polygon, oh my goodness, right? Bonus question, draw a 120-sided polygon. Can't do it, right? It's too hard by hand, but uh, it could happen, right? I mean, it could be done, but not by hand. But it would give you a really, really small central angle. Um, if you want to do this one, this is a hexagon, one, two, three, 
six. Yeah, there's a hexagon. The interior is 120. I can tell you that. The exterior, I'm just going to do the cheat that has to be 60. Central will also be 60. So if you want to try that one, then you can go for it. All right, let's do one of these ones that is harder. I will do this one, and this one will be up to you. So nine minutes. Let's see if we can do this. Calculate the value of the specified side. Determine the perimeter of this polygon. We will first do A. We'll find, try to find X. Uh, this is a regular, by the way. Regular poly. Write that down. It's very important. It means that if you go from the center to this corner, this side would be exactly the same as that side. Would you agree with that? From the center to any corner, it's the same distance, right? So if this is 13, you can conclude that this is 13 automatically. Can you use sine law, cosine law at all right now? You only have two sides, right? Wouldn't it be awesome to find this one here? And then have a side angle side. Yes, it would be. So central central angle would be 360 divided by how many sides do we have here? I'm going to start here, check mark. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. N is equal to 10. I'll make sure I have that on the side here. So divide that by 10, you get 36 degrees. Right arrow in there. Now have SAS. Right? So to find x squared for now, I have to take 13 squared plus, let's do this cosine law because some of you forgot already, right? That's cosine law. So 13 squared, 13 squared minus 2 times a times b times cosine of 36 degrees. X is equal to, let's type that in, 13 squared, 13 squared, minus 2 times 13 times 13, cosine of 36, that's 64.552, and keeps going. Square root, 8.03 inches. This answers A. Okay, all of this answers A. B, the beauty of A and B, right? If you you answer A in two decimals, you can then just keep it at two decimals and use that answer in B. You don't have to do the four decimal thing. If the question had only asked for perimeter, where this is required to find before the perimeter, then you have to do four decimals. That's the that's that's the convention here. Perimeter is how would you find the perimeter of that polygon? How many x's by ten? Yeah, lots of x's, right? This one. Oh boy, you don't get the joke, do you? Anyways, you do, you don't want to talk about it. 80.3 inches. Done. So this is probably the hardest part. Finding that. That's A and then perimeter is just... Uh, I will do this. N is equal to 10. So this can be projected to any N-sided polygon, right? Like... You would just say if it's an octagon, you would go 8 times x, right? So it's, it's as simple as that. Could you find the area of this thing? The answer is yes. So you would have, you'd go base times the height, find the area of one triangle, and then multiply it by 10 as well. I don't do that. It might be a bonus question, but then you at least know how to do the bonus, right? Okay. Uh, I'm going to stop teaching here, but I would like you to try this one ideally before we go because it's the same thing to see if you can fix different number of sides.
So you do the same thing we just did in, in five. You do that same thing in question six. I will give you the answer. Uh, in brackets, I will do that here. Uh, A is 13.81. And B, obviously, or not quite so obvious, but it's 151.91 feet. 151.91. 